watch. Wake up. You got fire to watch. It's not. Do you read? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is not. Do you read me? Con Tower. I read you Lima Charm. Con Tower. Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field up. Over. Stand by. Cocktail. Permission granted. Say again. Permission granted. Roger that. Launching podcast in three, two. <clears throat> We're now entering the field up. With your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. Hurrah! Get some. Hurrah! What's going on, everybody? It's good to be back. Friday, baby Friday is upon us, or Friday Night's Eve, as I also like to call it, but goddamn, it's almost a weekend. So for those of you who got to, you know, have Monday off, welcome back. Hey, it's a short day week. So before this, before we get all this, all this show, the show started, and um, and all that good stuff. We have an awesome guest for you today. Uh, let's get all the pleasantries out of the way. Hey, this show is brought to you by Primerica. When was the last time that you that you you know took a look at your finances and where is it that you're at right now and where is it that you want to be? And so what do I mean by that is basically, you know, when was the last time that you you looked at all your debt, all the stuff, you know, all your money going out? Where is it going? And how to you know how to get rid of all that debt and even paying off your house and in 10 years, sometimes even less, to get organized and basically have something and save up for a future. If, if you've never done that, reach out to one of the folks uh, in Primerica. They'll do what is called a financial needs analysis. They'll take all your debt, add no commitment, no charge. It's a complimentary free service. And then you get to find out what is your, finan your financial, you know, what they call a financial independence number. And what is that you need for really need for you to sustain and survive for you know after your retirement years? Again, it's enough, and also they do debt consolidation in a tactical manner. So give them a call, no commitment, doesn't cost anything. At the end of the day, you may get some good info and that you know where you're at currently at and where you should be. So it's all in the show description right there. So reach out, send an email, and you know, we'll see what happens. Also, this show is brought to you by the VA. So here's an awesome public message from Mike Richmond. <clears throat> this message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Did you serve in the military? If so, you can obtain a free lifetime pass to more than 2,000 federal recreation sites. These sites are located across more than 400 million acres of public lands, including national parks, wildlife refuges, and forests. The lands host activities to fit any lifestyle, hiking, biking, fishing, camping, and much more. Old Star families are also eligible for these free lifetime passes. Plus, they cover entrance fees for a driver and all passengers in a car, or up to three additional adults at sites that charge per person. Obtaining one is easy. Just go to the National Park Service website, nps.gov, or the National Park Service app. Hey, if you haven't taken advantage of the, you know, the great things that the VA has to offer, uh, you know, I highly encourage that you do so, especially putting in a claim and anything else that goes along with it, because while, you know, some of us may have a bad taste in our mouths as it relates to, you know, government organizations, it's still some, it, it is a great seesaw, uh, resource that's there for us right now. Yes, Scott, the hoochie's on. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great resource for us. And at the end of the day, you know, they do compensate and put in your claims benefit in there. So it's money that's coming back to your pocket because you gave your, your body, mind, and soul and spirit to God, country, and core, and the government got the pound of flesh out of you. So go get your benefits at the end of the day. If you need help with that, Hit us up here at the show. We'd be more than glad to uh, point you in the right direction and give you some really good good info as well. We got a lot of good resources as well. All right, and so this show is also brought to you by the Great American Constitution. I mean, I fought for and I still fight for this great nation of ours. We raise our right hand to protect uh, you know our freedom and that great awesome document uh, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So. If it was if, if it wasn't for that document, I wouldn't be here today saying all kinds of you know all stuff that we're gonna say here in just a second. So 
If you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and follow. Make sure you hit us on our YouTube channel and Facebook as well. Or if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, you know, swipe left and check something out from situator.com, which we wouldn't be here today without them guys uh, pushing the buttons on, up in the back. So check it all out. And perhaps one day you might be a podcaster yourself. So with that being said, everybody, I think that's all pretty much all the pleasantries. Today, we got a great guest. Uh, I happen to work uh, right next to this man, mainly for, you know, with him, for him. Um, he was a great leader, great mentor, very lo low key, uh, level headed individual, uh, an artillery man, just like uh, Colonel Whitley when, or Dan Whitley when he was here a couple of weeks ago. So this kind of continuation of me having to work with uh, my fellow artil artillery man, more T side. So let's bring Scott Jaworski to the house. Hey, how we doing? What's going on, brother? How you you're looking been? at it, man. You're looking at it. So yeah, that was great. That was a great intro there. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, I happen, you know, having to have worked with you guys, uh, and yes, I, I am drawing that line on the sand. Uh, that was stepping into a whole different world uh, <laughs> in the Marine Corps. But let's yeah. before before we get it all into that. Let's do what we all jarheads do when we meet one another. You know, tell me about a little bit about your career when you came in. Uh, you know, all that good stuff. What units you were with, and so on and so forth. Okay, I'll try. It, it was, you know, not quite as long as yours, I think, but pretty <laughs> long. So it's, I'm trying not to take too long. We're gonna go through this whole thing. I, I saw okay. Scott Gilman already put a comment in there, <laughs> yeah, so no. I'll have to talk about you know running around the desert with MTVR uh, with that thing. Uh, when he was my maintenance chief on that. Um, yeah, started out, uh, I actually, I did kind of a weird one where I went to college and then I enlisted, uh, was with three, wow. eight back when there was a three, eight, uh, as an infantryman and you know, that early on my Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Heron, solid dude was like, Hey man, you need to, you're, you're getting a little long in the tooth. You, maybe you need to put in an officer package now. So he, we put one through. They pulled me off of deployment, uh, which I thought was, we all thought that was, you know, what do you mean? You're going to pull me off of deployment. Now, this is 94, 95, 95. So I go OCS. They say, Hey, you're going to, you know, of course at, at TBS, everyone, everyone's like, you got to be a grunt. You got to be a grunt. You got to be. <laughs> and they're like, well, sorry, you're bottom of the top third. So you're going to be an artillery guy, which was great. I mean, I'm <clears throat> something I'm eternally thankful for. Um, then uh, went to 10th Marines. Unfortunately, I went to 10th Marines first because if, I think if I'd gone to 11th Marines and then 10th Marines, that that would have that I would have lost my mind. I'm like, what, you know, <laughs> there's just not good shooting there at, at Camp Lejeune. Um, so did my time there, and then they they were doing this thing at the time where they would let you augment. In, instead of uh, going into another MOS permanently, you could do it like temporarily. So instead of like, you know, when you're like almost ready to make captain and they're like, hey, go, you know, go hang out at the recruit depot and everything which like, yeah, no thanks. That's a drill instructor place. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do recruiting. Um, and they didn't want to put me in MSG because, you know, like, look at this. Would you want me at an embassy helmet? <laughs> so, so they... So they uh, they said, hey, you can be a logistician for three years. So I go to TSB, which had just formed at that point, you know, and that was right when, you know, the seventh motors and the first LSB guys yeah. like button heads all the time because, you know, the motors guys are like, I don't want to wear this stupid red patch. And the red yeah. patches are like, ah, I can't believe these motor T guys are able to wear the hallowed red patch. And I'm just like, dude, I don't care. It's my job, whatever. So I, I did four years as an 04. Uh, first, first field op was uh, in support of 11th Marines. Uh, the regimental S4 at the time was one Colonel Mike Frazier, Major oh my Mike Frazier, God. <laughs> I should say. So that's when I met the Frazier. Uh, and we'll and, talk about him too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, um, and you know, got wire brushed by him multiple times. And then, uh, and then just, just before you know, 2003 before the March, uh, they're like, Hey, guess what? You're back to be in our tournament. We're going to send you back to school. And then, Oh, by the way, you're going to go to 11th Marines. So I went to, went to 111, uh, and was with them through 2004, which was an amazing experience. Cause that was the whole, like, 
you know, the March and all that, the, I, I think most of us would agree the ultimate artillery battle um, because of the, the whole like, hey, you know, we're starting in, starting in Kuwait, moving north really fast and then, and then having to shoot the whole way. It was pretty challenging. Um, so, so then, uh, three years on I and I duty at Fort Worth, uh, three years at the war fighting lab, and then, uh, back to 11th Marines. Uh, but of course it was the back. So I got back to 11th Marines, what, 2010. And it was the, the standard back then, which was, yeah, hey, welcome aboard. You're going to Afghanistan now, now would be a good time. Bye. Uh, and yeah. punched out over there, uh, did that last combat tour at camp leatherneck i mean it, no it wasn't you know it was like you know i i don't it, it it was i was a total fobbit i mean i i don't i never try to pretend that that was some sort of like oh there i was in this no no i wasn't i was <laughs> eating at a defac every night and living large um and then uh yeah then back to 11th marines uh to, specifically to 111 uh and then uh and then fraser pulled me up and said uh hey you're gonna be the four uh i know you i know you had to do, know how to do this four stuff so guess what get in there so wire brushed by him then wire brushed by lazuski and then uh and then off to pasture it was it was a great run and you know the chance to retire out of las pulgas was amazing uh just it was just so cool to kind of be where I thought was home, you know, right. and then, and retire out of there. So yeah, no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> it was a great run. No, I, and I know that you guys, and by the way, thanks for your, thanks for your, you know, your great service and dedication to this great nation of ours, brother. Thanks, you know. man. You too. <laughs> thanks. You know, it, I, I know that for me, it, that was like a huge, I'm not going to lie. It was a huge culture shock is, you know, although, you know, as um, you know, starting out as enlisted, and um, and freaking, and then moving, and then kind of morphing, morphing into this warrant officer thing, where the guys that I came through, you know, along the way, you know, the you know the 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 Lucas and the you know Freemans, uh, you know, all the Radamans, and these, these are all guys who, and Rad, by the way, Captain Radam was an LDO up at the schoolhouse, and then because he couldn't advance, he went back down to being a warrant. I mean, these guys were like, you know, tough as nails and shit, right? But yeah. So, you know, I had this mentality, oh, okay, you know, hey, I'm allowed to just, you know, I'm doing this, whatever. And then then I get to MTM and uh Bobby, you know, um uh, what was Bob Bobby's uh, last name? He was the five at division, but he calls me up like, hey dude, I'm trying to keep you in um in CONUS. And so that way you don't get deployed. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I just got back from Japan. And by the way, I was part of a whole ma major earthquake tsunami bullshit going on back there. What yeah. the fuck? He's like, hey, I got a great gig for you. Don't you <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not, I, I'm not making this shit up. He calls me, okay, I got this, this great gig. You're going to be the regimental MTO. And, uh, you know, you just be, you could go to college and go golfing. And I'm like, I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm even me. You beat him down like a year later. Oh, dude. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> you know? What a lie. Lies. <laughs> I get over there, bro. And I mean, let's just face it. You, you fucking guys love the field. I mean, it's day on, stay on, dude. Well, and you know? what I mean, I always like, you know, the thing with, and, and you know, you got to see it up close. Like, artillerymen, we realize real early on like look we can't do our job right just awaits you know so you know i need trucks to take me to the field i need engineers to run my generators i need freaking calm guys to so i can talk you know blah blah, blah you know all, you know on and on and on and so it's like hey on the one hand we appreciate you but on the other hand we are going to ride you hard and put you up wet jesus um, christ yeah and like um oh crap i'm blanking on his name who was who was the uh who is our, our our engineer officer before Jerkowitz? Jerkowitz was great, don't get me wrong, he was awesome. 
I remember that guy. Gallo? Was, was it Gallo? Bob Gallo? Yes. No. He was. He just retired. Angry. He just, just fucking retired about a month ago, dude. So tra- remember how mad he always was because he'd be like, you guys are breaking my generators again. And I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. You know, there's like, we're, tr- we're trying to get guys licensed and, you know, and, and all that. And they're just, just, you know, just like wet stack in the generator. As if I heard wet stack a generator one more time and, and what was pathetic was like, here I was, I was the regimental four and I'm supposed to know all this stuff. And he's having to explain it to me. Like, I'm like, Oh, so that's why they're broken all the time. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so, I mean, so that's the crazy thing about artillery, you know, more, I think more yeah. so than most MOSs and that we just, we realize that, Hey, to do our mission, we need so much extra help and motor transport is the huge like we have i mean you you got to see it up close and personal we have more motor transport gear than i i think any other unit in the division yeah, and, uh, as i know, recall it's, it's the you know 11th marines as a whole has got the largest fucking motor pool in the west coast i i think i think i would i would even go almost to say almost an entire marine corps i mean it's it's fucking it, massive dude have, yeah, remember i mean like you had walk that whole motor pool I mean that was that was that was a workout you know yeah. um it, and it was just i mean it's great don't get me wrong you know we had a, it was a blast but yeah i and and i remember you came in and you got the the fire hose because the bill huh. was gapped and we had just like so much to pick up and and i think i i think too the other the other problem that that you ran into that we ran into was we were also coming off this time period where we weren't doing like strategic mobility exercises and stuff but all we were doing was just like packing our shit and going to afghanistan yeah. but by packing our shit i mean we were like just grabbing our sea bags and you know maybe a few cute you know six cubes and things and then <clears throat> you know off we'd go we weren't doing like when we were kids in the Marine Corps, like, okay, we got to get all the motor staples done because this, yeah. we oh, have yeah. to put this vehicle on a ship and, and, or on a plane, you know, all and all that, that had to go with that, the real maintenance. And so guys were just beating the crap out of their stuff. And I, I remember when, uh, I, I think it was, it was, it was Colonel Lazuski. We did that, that strategic mobility exercise. And it was just like, I'm having to explain to guys like, well, yeah, this is what that means. And they're like, I've never heard of this before, sir. This is interesting. And I'm like, well, okay, that's, that's kind of like, this is stuff I learned when I was like, you know, like, I mean, definitely second Lieutenant yeah. time frame. Um, yeah, maybe I didn't know about it when I was a Lance Corporal, but you know, I mean, and then I, I got like majors that are like sitting there going, oh, I've never heard of this before. Oh, my God, Jesus. You know? So, yeah, yeah. You, you, we had a challenge. Uh, to yeah, it, it was a frustrating time period because, you know, I come from that mindset. Yeah, you know, we're, you know, basic rifleman, all that good stuff, support support the unit. However, it, you know, you guys are like, go, go, go. Let's, let's make shit happen. It's like, hey, fucking, you know, what about, you know, at least bubble, bubble gum and duct tape. It's just, you can only be, yeah, I remember coming out of one meeting <clears throat> And uh, you know, Steve Lazuski was, was there, you know, was there and Dr- and Drew Everly, he said some shit, and I just looked at and he and then Steve looked at me and, and I said, that's bullshit. And uh, and after the meeting, you know, yeah, er- Everly stops me and he, he's like, Hey Gunner, what the fuck? And I was like, Hey sir, bottom, you know, bottom line is, you know, I work for him, I don't work for you. So my job is to keep him out of jail. And you know, I said. It's a shame that you sit here and you, ba- you know, you blatantly tell this guy, your boss, you know, you know, think shit is incorrect. You know, if if you want me to, you know, speak on your behalf or whatever, then let's have a talk before the meeting and we can converse. But don't come here, you know, kind of just like rattling bullshit when it's really not true. It's fucked I, up. I think I, one of the things I remember, <clears throat> like Lazuski had a reputation of being like this ultimate hard ass, you know, and, and like, oh my gosh, he's going to, he's like, I remember when he was coming on board, he, you know, guys I knew and respected were like, dude, he's going to come and destroy you. And I was like, I was terrified. And what I found out with Lazuski early on, my experience, and I think our experience yeah. from the foreside was as long as I didn't try to BS him, 
you know, right. I can give him bad news. I mean, like I remember a few times and actually High Mars was the classic one of having Fucking to go with, with, Mars, with, dude. with maintenance. Like, <laughs> like I didn't know you could go green, yellow, red, and that there was a black, you know, I had never seen black in my entire career before. And then the whole, I'm like, Oh, so that's like, it was like what? 50%, right. You got there and it was black. And I was like, Holy shit, this happened. And this is like, you know, as we like to say, the meth commander's shotgun, you know, it's like the, right. the long range thing that the division, com I should say the division commander had in his asset. And so it's a big deal if those things are down. And as long as I went to him and like, yes, sir, this is really bad, but here's why, you know, right. these parts aren't in the system. This, you know, we're, you know, we, you know, we're, we're working this, we are doing everything we can look. <laughs> You know, and and it did it helped because I had you and I had Batone on on the uh, on the ordnance side, and a crap ton of, I mean, um, I was so spoiled with chief one officers as the four. It was ridiculous. I mean, like you know, you Batone, Quinn, um, Frank and Mancus. There was just like this. I had oh this, my this god, list. he just retired too. Matt, fucking Steve just just retired Ma too. As major, a Mancus. major Mancus. Yeah, out of shit, all right. Three. Yeah, and so <laughs> like, like, so we had that that amazing group of guys, and so I think Lazuski knew that. Okay, if these guys can't get it done, it's it's just not getting done. It's just like there's you know you can't bend the laws of physics. You can't get blood out of a rock. All that kind of stuff and he was reason and i i i don't know about you but i i never caught caught flack from him never i was like you know the only time i saw him really in <laughs> and i can't remember his name right now but i remember we had that combo that when we were doing the tr the switch over to the, the 117 golfs and that was a cluster and it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't all the and i don't think it was really the combo's fault no but he would sit there and try oh, to tap things. dance in those. He would try to tap dance in those meetings, and we would yeah. tell him afterwards. We'd be like, "Dude, don't do that with this don't guy. Don't bullshit Just, the guy. Don't bullshit the old man. man. Give him the bad news and and explain. Here's what. Here's you know, I have bad news. Here's my plan to fix it. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. he'll take that. No, dude, never would. It would just be like. It it got it got painful in some of those. Like you're just sitting there going like, oh, you know, watching this guy just take a shotgun blast to the chest. Like, oh, bro. I have a I, I have a story. So Mankus and I, this is when I when Frazier, right before he freaking punched out, did that drug deal with 311, where I was sent to fucking purgatory, <laughs> work, working for fucking Chris Camilla. God, and I ran into that guy um, at. Um, he ended up being the commander of, of food, Camp Fuji, but yeah. So we're we're out on the field, and um, you know their thing was having you know having their big. It's called the, the big three count. So you had to have your rifle, your your um, your K bar, and uh, your bayonet, and then some other shit. So they call the big three. So every day, <clears throat> you know, they would do the big three count. So one day I, I, I know for, for whatever reason, you know, I had, you, you know, the, the, the bars that go right here on your lapels and you, you know, yeah, yeah. I had a big CW three bar. And uh, so the thing was, Hey, if you're an officer, you know, another officer had to, you know, review your big three, you know, your, your pistol, your fucking bayonet, blah, 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 all that bullshit. I show up, I walk up to him. I'm like, Hey fucker, here's my big three. That dude lost his shit. He's like, Oh, Oh, shit. And I was even to this day, uh, I you know, right before we retire, I'm, you know, I sent him a text. I'm like, hey, I still got my big three, though. Don't fucking forget that. <laughs> you know, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Oh man, but that was I talk about Frazier a little bit. He did this that freaking drug deal, and uh, oh, that was rough trying to get back, get go, trying to get back to you. <laughs> no, well, problem, you know? and that was like that was one of those. <laughs> I, I sort of like, I had, and understand like, like seriously, like, so when I met Frazier, that was 99. So right. when that happened, he and I had known each other for a dozen years, 13 years, something like well, that. And by the way, he's a, he's a shit hot guy, and, great, and great he, guy to work for. Fuck and he, me. I, I think it was just a classic case of, Cause I can't remember who, who that guy that was. Cause I did, 
did the guy that you replaced, did he get relieved or something? There was a reason. I can't, I'm blanking right now why it was exactly. Well, oh, you know, so he, he was having issues, PTSD and everything. And it, I don't know if you heard, he ended up actually, you know, committing suicide a few years no. later. Yeah. And up in No, Quantico. I did not. Yeah. Tony Hill, uh, who's another fellow Mortar T uh, warrant officer, chief warrant officer. He was a co one of the cops um, that responded to that situation and tried to take care of him. And yeah, it was pretty bad. You know, may the dude rest in peace. Yeah. Okay. So that I'll tell you his name after. I just want to keep him, you know, uh, yeah, but yeah. Totally get it. So I, I think it was one of those like, and the and I think he also knew that you know the issue that we were going to have with um, with three eleven is because you know they're out in twenty nine palms and we're all back here. So right. and and Escamilia would it would have gotten <laughs> to, from bad to like a lot worse. And I think I think Fraser was like, I need to take kind of a drastic step here. Yeah. And and he was comfortable because because a we did have good chief warrant officers at the battalion level back here. Um, oh man, I'm gonna I'm so mad at myself right now. Your chief. Um, oh, uh, Bunnell, Ezra Bunnell. Yeah, he, yeah, he's in we, Texas. By the way, we just we we talked to um, about Ezra's a month in Texas. Ago. Shocking! Yeah. I never would have thought about that. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit, right. No shit, right. <laughs> Um, you know, we had Benel back, back there. And I think that was like, he, he recognized it like, okay, Hey, look, I've, I've got to do a division of, you know, what economy right. force, I'm going to call it and, you know, do some split ops. And that was, that was the best thing to do. But yeah, I mean, that was, it was weird because there was such a sea change when, um, uh, Oh man, I should have this up. Went basically when the new commander came in at 311. Yeah. It went from where like everything was hard, everything was difficult. I just I I hated like having to go and be like, hey, 311, here's the support I need from the regimental level, and just being told no, you know, to like, sure, yeah, no problem. Like, you know, I was kind of like, whoa, wait a minute, what do you mean? What do you mean, yes? Like, what's the catch here? You know, like, no, you just, here's your thing. Okay, cool. Um, so those those were some. Yeah, those are some interesting times. To say and by the way, the guy that just joined, he, he put a comment on the screen, uh, Dan Stevenson. He was the regimental MTO years back, um, be, about you know two MTOs before. before. And, I, and that dude and I, we actually ended up working together in the Middle East on a government contract. So, yeah. You know, but. <laughs> well, and, then, and, and he knows. I mean, it's just like, that's just, you know, it, and. The thing is, like, for the most part, if you look at the guys that 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 we've had in that position or as the chief there, you know, they're kind of like, you know, like Paris Moultrie. I mean, that guy's been I think he's still out there uh, working as a civilian. And he was a freaking legend when when we did the march up in 03 um, and everyone respected the hell out of him, partly because he could wrangle that craziness that was the 11th Marines motor pool. You know, and then, oh, by the way, you know, actually valid, you know, that's the other crazy thing was like, because we did have to then worry about 311 and 29 Palms and making sure that their stuff was squared away. And that got easier the, you know, <laughs> the the last couple of years uh, for reasons we just talked about. Uh, but it's it didn't make it like it still was a challenge, you know. Um, but that was also kind of cool, though, because we did know that every time we went up there for Des Fire X or Desert Scimitar or whatever, that we kind of had a place that if, if we had to, we could go, you know, there was a motor pool back there right. that yeah. we had to, if we needed to get some work done, okay, you know, get it over there. We can do what we got to do and then get it back out to Wilson or wherever the hell we were. Which, which we did uh, several times, you know, when, when, when we were there. Yeah. Let me let yeah. me ask you this. So now that you're on the on the blue card side of the house, um, what do you miss? What do you miss? What do you miss uh, from being in? I don't miss the bullshit or the or when I see the Facebook post. Hey, we just got brought into the weekend because Benatz got drunk on the weekend and got a DUI. I mean, I don't miss that shit. But what no. do you miss? <laughs> so like, yeah, talk about things I don't miss. I I'll tell you the funny don't miss story first before I go into things I do miss was okay. um. 
so I remember, I, I don't know if you remember, I retired uh, November 1st of yeah. 13. Right. And Desert Scimitar that year was like the most epically ridiculous. It was bad. Um, and I'm sitting there, I'm at home, I'm in Encinitas. And uh, all these Facebook posts are flying back and forth going, oh, my God, it's like the worst weather ever. You know, people are just crying. And I'm just sip, sipping my coffee going like, yeah, I think I'll go for a bike ride. Later. And then and then, you know, maybe I'll go surfing. I don't know, because guess what? I don't have to work. And yeah, you guys are out there. So, yeah, I didn't miss that at all. Um, I, I think I think what I missed the most. It was funny because you had you had uh, Khalil on. The other day and yeah. and seeing him when i was out there at pendleton uh a couple months ago really made me think about this is that i, I missed that the young marines and the chance to to like mentor and all that at, at that level i i don't i don't get that anywhere near as much like no. at on the civilian side because like, like so now i'm a government civilian and, and frankly a lot of government civilians kind of don't even they're like I, I got this I, I don't need help from you and I'm like okay that's fine cool uh rock on um but whereas you know the young the young marines were always like would you know if, if you went down especially if you went with that kind of if you went down with like let me tell you how it's done there marine like okay that was never going to work right but if you kind of went with a bit of a servant leadership attitude like yeah. hey how can i help and let's talk about this hey my experience blah 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 Except for when I was a second lieutenant, because no one. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say point, right? the, the, like, yeah. my, those three, those three words. <laughs> yeah, like in my experience, like like what's the Lance Corporal words? You know, hey, sir, watch this. You know, uh, <laughs> like no. Uh, but the um, I think I I miss that a lot. Um, I I miss the you know kind of just like the BS sessions. Um, you know, it's that love hate relationship, like with the field right. where you just yeah, like, yeah. you've just, I you've it. just been beaten to parade rest through the day. You've done all these movements all the way through, uh, 29 palms or whatever. And now you're just like, you know, um, and now you're just like, uh, just so tired, but you've got that moment you're like, and you know, we're okay. We're all going to meet up in the a lock and, and like, Hey, here's the scheme maneuver for tomorrow man, that was crazy, wasn't it? You know, and, and, and all that kind of stuff that we would, we would talk about. So I think that's probably the thing I missed the most. Right. Oh, I, no, I I, I, you know, a lot of the, I the don't miss, and, and, and the bullshitting, Hey, you yeah. know, let's, you know, let's sit around in our box and just banter on each other. And call a, and call each other, hey fucker, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was like, I always joked, you know, talking about Fraser was was uh, when I checked back into Eleventh Marines, and you know, and 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 you know, and I I knew, you know, here I, it's my second time there. Uh, it's it is what I considered my home regiment. I'd known Fraser for a long time, and and uh, and of course I already know, like, hey man, you're going to be here for like a month or two, and then you're deploying. I'd already been told, so like all that stuff you know, we, we knew all that. And I check in at my alphas. And in fact, I think Khalil is checking me in. And I just hear from, from out of Frazier's office, Jorsky, you fuck stick, get your happy ass in here right now. And it was like, ah, I'm home. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you know, it's kind of like everything's good. Like, I, if, if he'd been like, Andrew Jaworski, I need you to come see me now. Uh, I'd be like, Oh, Jesus, what the hell did I do? You know, I just yeah. got here. How did I fuck it up so badly already? Yeah. And you know, oh, it, and so, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you miss that. And like, and that, that's what was so great about, you know, and I think, and you, I'm, I guarantee you definitely saw this. Where like those young Marines that you mentored and then suddenly, you know, and, and, you know, you, 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 you had them when they were a Lance Corporal or a Corporal. And then you're, and then like later on, you know, you, it's a few years later, you've all switched units and you see them and now they're a staff sergeant. And you're like, oh, yeah. ah, you know, man, I, I, I did that, you yeah. know, uh, and, and, you know, seeing Khalil pin on major was just one of the, the coolest things I've ever cool seen. Kid, man. Because, yeah. I remember, I mean, I remember. I, mean, I call him a cool. kid because I mean, he's, he's fucking young, but I mean, yeah. I remember him, you know, always, sir. And I was, you know, 
anyways, I mean, so those, squared away. yeah, you know, all those things is what I think for me nowadays. And even when I touch back with some of the Marines and such, um, they're like, you know, hey, sir, you know, thanks for X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. th that's what, that's what makes it, you know, it, it makes worth that time, you know, all better, but. Yeah. We're coming up to the top of the hour, bro. Where can yep. where can okay. if people have well where can people find you uh if they got questions, want to be mentored or anything of the sort, how can people reach out? So uh, I so frankly the best way to reach me, I guess, is you know, and, and I I think it's publicly available is like, you know, hit me up on Instagram. I okay. I, I mean I'm super uncreative. I think it is Scott Jaworski, I'm pretty sure uh same thing with facebook you know so whatever the facebook or instagram message uh i don't do a whole lot of the i don't do the the tweets or x's or whatever the hell they're called now <laughs> it's just like i just yeah, that that's about it i'm not mr social media all the time uh but yeah i mean that's the best way to hit me up uh, dude it has been it, it has been a, a a freaking pleasure and an honor and we got a lot more stories so we're definitely going to bring you back Okay, so cool. We can, yeah, we can bullshit. And, <laughs> no shit. There I was. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, there I was. Yeah, that's the other thing you never want to hear. It's like, oh, geez, here we go. Yeah, exactly. But thanks so much, Scott. I really appreciate you. And um, you know, we'll wrap we'll wrap it up here, and then we'll we'll say goodbyes. You know, off the air, you, brother. Sounds Bye, good, brother. man. Thanks, Sounds man. <clears throat> that was a, a man. Just. Talking uh, with with uh, Scott or Jaws, aka Jaws, is his other nickname as we knew him. Uh, brings back a lot of freaking great memories, and that's the whole purpose of this show. Is that you know, if if you want to be part of the show, hey, reach out over here and let's talk about some of you know the good times or even the bad times and things that uh, you know, and how is that we can help you out and such. But I brought a lot of great, a lot of great memories, a lot of good, good stuff. Um, Scott was one of the, is one of the good ones, uh, along with uh, the Matt Maxes, the the Daniel Stevensons, and everything else, everybody else uh, who I was lucky to be mentored with. But hey, before we get we get off the air, if you've been struggling with things such as ruminating, you're going into a dark place. Um, Memorial Day was just you know for some of, for a lot of us, Memorial Day is not a day of barbecues and all that all the happy horse shit. A lot for a lot of us remembering I know those who are no longer here with us, and some of us may still have some of that deal with that guilt so if you're going through a tough time please reach out to my show reach out to me i mean you know i'm on facebook linkedin on youtube i mean i'm all over the place reach out to me let me you know let me let me talk to you for a little bit and get get you some resources but because at the end of the day nobody wants to you know i don't want to you know be talking at your funeral or you know writing your obituary or some other dumb shit like that so at the end of the day you know we need you here your family needs you here your life matters so uh yeah call the va uh military one source tricare suicide hotline but just reach out to somebody and if you haven't heard from a buddy do a buddy check this weekend that's your homework all right so hey thanks so much we're gonna index right here ice the mass dice the key i'll talk to you next week see you everybody Bye bye <clears throat>